<laughs> Good morning, Mount Zion. This morning I will be reading from James, first chapter, verses 22 through 25. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto the man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what man of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. Amen. May God add a blessing to the hearers of his holy word. Amen.
Praise the name of the Lord. I get the feeling that the Spirit of God rode in on somebody this morning. It might not be you, but somebody recognizes that Goliath is still out there. You know somebody got some financial problems? I ain't talking about you. You know God got you. Somebody going through sickness you know about? We still need God. I'm just glad to stand up before you today and tell you that I love him and got plenty of reasons to love him. Giving honor to God first, thanking him for waking me up just as I am. Could have been a whole lot different, but he did that, and I'm so grateful. I want to give honor to my pastor and his wife. They are an inspiration to me. And I thank God for my fellow brethren in the ministry. Uh, Brother Gardner and Brother Barnes. They drive me in a direction, and I think that's a good thing. If you've got a Bible somewhere nearby, go with me to Isaiah chapter 40, and we're going to look at verse 31. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. There was a a preacher in Little Rock. No, let me change that. He wasn't a preacher. He was a lawyer. And he was wearing a pin on his lapel that I had never seen before. I'm helping you out because I'm wearing that same lapin this morning. If you can't see it, you ought to check it out later on. But here's what the scripture says. But they that wait upon the Lord, that's key right there, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they won't faint. This is uh, an opportunity to share with you a prescription for your troubles. And help you to find it in the book and go back to it. Strength to overcome. Who does God bless like this? Do I have a witness? Who are the people that are receiving God's strength of grace? Everybody doesn't get this kind of strength. Not everyone is allowed to soar with wings of an eagle. Let me bring it closer to home. I'm talking about when God swoops down into your bad situation and lifts you up out of it. But I want you to understand the first part of that verse. It said, they that wait on the Lord. You're not just sitting there going, all right, God, it's time to show up. But you trust in him that he's going to do what you need when you need it. God understands your viewpoint. He understands your situation better than you do. So you don't have to get tired waiting on God to handle it for you. God provides second wind. My coach used to tell me when I would complain about running up and down them steps with my arms up holding and yelling stupid stuff, but I was tired. And he said, you're going to hit a wall, and you're going to get tired, and you're going to want to stop. But if you keep on running, you're going to go right through that wall. And when you come out on the other side, you got superhuman strength. We got that with God. Tell that problem to show up and won't they find out that you got second wind, you're not going to die on the first shot. But that only happens for those who believe. You got to have faith. You got to strip all that stuff off that's you and say, Lord, I'm yours. You want me to overcome this? I can't do it without you. Expect 
that kind of spiritual power in your life. They that walk and not faint. God changes you rather than your problem sometime so that you can endure and go through and be a witness to somebody else. I heard Joshua say, be strong and of good courage. You got something to smile about. They don't know what you're packing. Don't pay attention to your little fears and worries. Don't tremble because of the trouble. God has taken hold of the land. And I'm on my way to my seat. He has taken hold of the land so that you can possess it. The Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given you Jericho. And into your hands, it's king and it's mighty valor of men. God didn't say, Joshua, you go take the city. Joshua didn't go forth hoping that he might win like some of us. I hope we do all right. God has already taken it for you. All you got to do is possess it. Only way to possess it is to have faith and walk therein. Let me tell you what he told me. He said, Napa, I've broken your bad habits. All of them for your life. You just got to remember that you received that victory and walk on. Remember, we are co-heirs with Christ. Every power Jesus has, you have. Maybe not in the full portion, but you got enough to help you through. Was he victorious? We are his sons. We are victorious as well. So it's up to you whether or not we overcome. It's not about we hope you overcome. You already have. You just need to walk in it. It's just a little devotion. Life's going to always bring challenges each and every day. I'm a witness if you're not because he seems like he's hovering around me all the time with something. But God will always give strength to those who face it. We actually want to go and, and step ahead of him and do it for ourselves. And usually it turns out to be the wrong way to go. But for me, I'm learning how to wait, how to be patient, because I know what's coming for me at the end is a blessing from God. So we're going to give you a little bit of this song called Oh Jesus. And remember, just wait.
Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh. Talking about Jesus, Mary's baby, Jesus, mm. oh. anybody know who we talking about? We're talking about Jesus. Oh.
Amen. That's who we come to celebrate this morning. Amen. And if I were preaching, I'd ask y'all three times, what's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. That's who we come to celebrate. <laughs> that man named Jesus. Hallelujah. And isn't it wonderful to call his name and nothing has to be going on? I mean, everything could be just going fine, but it's just something about calling his name. Jesus. Amen. We certainly give God all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory on today. Amen. We want to thank him for giving us one more day to come back into his house and to celebrate him. Amen. If you have your Bibles, amen. 1 Samuel 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. Sunday school already stirred up. Amen. Sunday school is already stirred up. Amen. First Samuel chapter 17, and I'm going to read one verse of scripture, and that's 37. First Samuel chapter 17, verse 37. King James Version reads like this. David said, moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear. I like this part right here. He will. Deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. I want to back up to that part where he said, He will deliver me. <laughs> and that's, that's, what I, that's just what I want to get our devotion focused on. He will deliver me. Amen. Amen. As we gather in this place one more time here on the second Sunday in the month of December in the year of 2023. It's hard to come before you and not say of my own personal testimony about what the Lord can do. And I know you sitting in the pew. You can talk to your pew partner when I come up and say he's done it for me, too. Amen. Amen. The preachers in the pool pick and say for themselves he's done it for them, too. Amen. I just would put out there and believe that everyone that's sitting here can testify he's done it for you. He's delivered you out of something. Amen. As we look at this young boy named David, David who has already been anointed to take over kingship, but has not been in that position of being the king. He has already had an encounter with the God that we serve. He is getting ready to go forth in public to show everybody about the God that he serves. And he goes with confidence. We call it in the biblical term, it's called faith. How can he go before a nine-foot giant with faith and he's never fought in an army or a war before? Notice his confidence that he goes to this giant when everybody else in the army is cowering down. How can David do this? The same way you and I can do it. Yes, here in December, the last month in the year of 2023, second Sunday, all of us came up in here with some kind of giant. Reverend already said, you're facing some kind of obstacle. You're facing some kind of transition or some kind of trouble that's in your life. I know you're in church. You got, the, you got the look on. You got it on. You got it on. You said that. Amen. Amen. But if you leave here, that same problem is going with you. But you ought to be able to face that problem with confidence, with faith. Why? Because God did it before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were about to turn the lights out before, but God did it. They were getting ready to turn you away from your job, but God did it. They did turn you away from your job, but he opened up another door. I'm just saying, somebody can testify that he will deliver me. David says, David says, David says, my faith in God is so real simply because he's done it before. David said, I fought a lion. I grabbed him by his beard. And I slew him. I fought a bear. Got rid of him and slew him. David said it wasn't me, but it was the God that I served. And he goes before the people in public because nobody else was with him when he killed the bear. Nobody else was with him when he killed the lion. 
But now he's gone before a whole army and the children of Israel. And he says to them, I killed a lion with the Lord. I killed a bear with the Lord. And he called that Philistine giant a dog. He said, the same way I slew them is the same way I'm going to slew this giant. He said, the Lord will deliver me. So I just want to know, can anybody in here testify the Lord will deliver you? It didn't look good coming in this morning. But uh, now that you got your devotion, now that the Lord said, I delivered David, he's the same God that can deliver you. Amen. Let us bow. Father, we thank you for your word again. Just simply reminding us that the trials of life will get tough sometimes. And we will have problems on every hand. But you are the same God that delivered David. You're the same God that can deliver us. And so, Lord, we praise you and give you thanks. We glorify and magnify your name. We're ready now, God. We'll run toward our problems because we know you got our back. Thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. And thank you for delivering us. We ask this now in your darling son, Jesus' name, we do now pray. And all that the Lord has delivered said, amen and amen. But he sure is going to do it, y'all.
done did. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. If you know, you know. Amen. 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 It's time for our responsive reading. For those of you who have your program, it's printed it there. For those of you who do not, it is in your Bible. Matthew chapter 6, verses 7 through 15. Amen. But when ye pray, Use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. But if you forgive men, men, and trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. Amen. Amen. Oh. Amen. Amen. I got mine. Yeah, have them a paper, yeah. Uh, first thing I want to do, I want all the, the men of Mount Zion to stand up, please. All the men to stand up. Amen. Now, men, we want to give these ladies a standing ovation. Amen. Get up, ladies. A standing ovation. Thank you so much now for, for what they did last night. I tell you what, they pulled out all the stops. And we are very appreciative of what went on last night. Now, we had a few games, contests. So I want to let the winners. Uh, uh, the winners got a gold medal and a and a, uh, a certificate for winning the trivia last night. Uh, what are my teammates? Amen. That's, that's the winning team right there. How about you, Cowboy? Amen. Ah, uh, uh, make sure. And then, uh, we got here second, second place, which is really the first loser. There they are. They, yeah, second place is the first loser. So. And then third place, which is the second loser. There they are. There they are. 
Amen. But we did have an awesome time, awesome food. And, uh, it was just, a, it, it was just uh, wonderful to see a church family uh, interacting like they did last night. Amen. Amen. Let me, let, let, me, let me tell you something. Where, whoever cooked anything, because it wasn't much left for the dogs, I'm going to tell you. Amen. Uh, the referees had some flags, and they uh, threw a couple of flags on some folks. Uh, too much food on plate. So they had to throw a flag because they had too much food on plate. But it was a great time. We just, again, we want to thank the ladies. Uh, you know, something had gotten started now. Amen. And no, nah, we don't call no truce. Uh uh. Uh uh. You know, See, when folks think they're here, they want, we can stop right here. Ah, 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 ah. And no truce. No, no, no. No truce. We're going to have a clear victor around here with this stuff. And uh, we just thank you for it, though. Great job, ladies. Again, we'll never be able to thank you enough. And all those who participated and helped and uh, with everything, the, the cooking, the fix, the decoration was just marvelous. Amen. The place looked great. Amen. So we just thank you for that. They, they, they covered all bases uh, last night. And, of course, they, they ra tried to raise the bar. And, You know, I, I I told them last night, a couple of more times they might get there. You know, that. a couple of more times they might get there. But for 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 their first time, they did pretty good. I, I'm finna sit down and rub bonds with the car. But recognize the folks. You see, there's a flat right there. <laughs> amen, amen. We have some recognitions uh, this morning uh, that we need to take time out for. Um, we got a positive office referral. Referring teacher is Miss Becker, and the student is Preston Matlock. Where you at, Preston? Right. Hey, Preston. All right. Preston has positive behavior. Amen. 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 And then Preston also has uh, completed level three. He is a I am a Lexa superstar. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he can he can do things like sun has three sounds and constants and sight words. The, my, and here. He can do that. Amen. Good job, Preston. Amen. And then we also have another positive office referral, and the referring teacher is Miss Mixon, and the student is uh, location. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Matlock, the sister. How you say your first name? That's her name. Amen. Lakeisha. Stand up, Lakeisha. Amen. Kalasia. Kalasia Matlock, that's the sister of Preston Matlock, and she has positive behavior. Amen. Good job. Amen. Kalasia. Amen. That's it. Need to, I need to go know how to pronounce it, huh? Student of the Month. This certificate is presented to Carson Young. Oh, yeah, Carson. Stand up, Carson. Amen. All right. 
Carson Young for being a star student at Magnolia Kindergarten on November 28, 2023, Miss Laurie's class. Amen. Yeah, good job. Amen. All right. All right. We have someone here that, God forbid, we don't never need it to happen. But if it does, I believe he can save our lives. Amen. Emerson's Fire Department, completion of Junior Firefighter Program, L.J. Robinson, 2023. Amen. All right. Good job, L.J. Amen. Amen. Can we just uh, give a special thanks to Top Chief Tony Colin for letting Amen. us be in his place? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, y'all did put it good this time. Yeah, yeah.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all look like y'all in a good mood today. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah, chapter 18. Amen. Jeremiah, chapter 18, and beginning with verse 1. Amen. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will call thee to hear my word. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheel. And the vessel that was made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. So he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I do with you as this potter? saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, mm -hmm. say are ye in my hand, O house Amen. of Israel. Amen. From this passage of scripture, we want to talk about in God's hand. Right. In God's Amen. hand. Amen. The reverence God, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Savior, the Holy Spirit, our comforter, and our guide. We give honor to uh, these fine preachers who are here with us today. Amen. Amen. To all of you who are here, our ushers, our choir, uh, everyone, we thank God for you being here today. Thank God for our visitors here today, also who are sharing in with this uh, experience that we have. I hope they don't think we too crazy, amen, uh, from how we've been going on this morning. Amen. Let me, let me share, we do it all the time, so yeah, if you, if you come back, it might be the same way. Amen. But we thank God uh, uh, for you here today. Yeah. Listen, you can, ha you can have a good time as a Christian. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You don't have to be all stuck up and all that kind of stuff. Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Familiar story, familiar text. Of Jeremiah going down to the potter's house. We want to focus in, if you look at verse 4, it says that, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Mm -hmm. The text does not tell us what the mar was or the defect, nor how it got there. Right. We started off this year in January. And from January 1 until December the 10th, some of the vessels have become marred. Amen. 
there are some things that have happened in your life these 11 months, 10 days that causes a mar to be in your life. There are some things that have messed you up. Amen. There are some things that you didn't see coming. You, you didn't make plans for this to happen. Amen. You, you, you started out with a lot of hope, promise, and enthusiasm. But along the way, a mark came in your life. Now, to be honest, some of the Mars were unexpected, yeah. and some of them were self-made. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Amen. Some of them uh, happened to us because of the actions that we put forth. Yeah. Listen, we, we, we hadn't all been right this year. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, now, we, we, we want to be honest with God and with ourselves. Yeah. Amen. We, we walk contrary sometimes to his word. We did things that we knew better than to do. Amen. And, and when we did that, it caused a mark, a defect to come in our lives. Some of us are dealing with a lot of defects in our lives. And that's why as we look at our lives and we look at the fact that we are in the potter's hand, we wonder, what is he going to do about all of these problems that I have? Amen. I don't want you to start listening because we could have a, a contest as to who got the most Mars in their life, who, who got the most problems, who has faced the most difficult things this year. All I know is we all. Yeah. Amen. Have faced. Thing this year. That by ourselves. We could not. Handle. Amen. Let, 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 let's just list a few. Some, some have faced some financial. Difficult. You would have thought by now. You've been in better shape. Then you in. You look back and see the money you made this year and you wonder where did it go? Hey, hey man, what did I do with it? I don't have anything to show uh, for all I've done this year. I went to work every day. I got a check every week, but I, I don't have anything to, to show for it. Some of us have battled sickness all year long. We go to the doctor and they give us pills for one thing, and two or three weeks later, we back trying to take pills for something else. Amen. We, we, we can't seem to just get right. Amen. Some of us, our jobs are causing us fit. Amen. Always a room of a layoff. Always a room of a shutdown. Uh, they bring in somebody out the streets and put them over us. And we've been there a long time. And, and, and it's our one problem after another. Some of our family is giving us fit. Amen. We don't understand what's going on. They're like the ones in our own house are the ones who causing us the most problems there. And, and, and we just have it. We just got more. Amen. He said that the vessel that he made was marred in the hands of the potter. Amen. It doesn't blame the potter for the mar. It blames the vessel for the mar. It's not God's fault that we're in the shape that we're in. But if we'll be honest about it, most of us know who 
the cause of the problem yeah. is. Yes. 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 It's that man yes. in the mirror. We are our own worst enemy. Amen. But as we read this text, and look at verse 4, it said that when the potter saw that that was a problem, he made again another vessel. In other words, he said, well, that didn't work. They messed that up. Let me fix them another way. And I thank God that the God we serve is able to fix us another way. Amen. And he fixed us in a way where it says that it seemed good to the pot. You know, if you go back to Genesis, when God made everything, he said, it's good. <laughs> but then when he made man, he said, it's very good. And then man got marred along the way. And so God had to figure a way to remake man. God said, now he got two eyes. I don't need to give him three. He got two ears, and that's enough to hear anything they want to hear. Yeah. Got one mouth, and he used that too much. Yeah. Don't need to give him another mouth. Got two arms, two hands, two legs, two feet. He got everything on the outside that he needs. So what I need to do is work on the inside. Amen. If I, if I could just fix the inside, maybe that would make a difference in man. Look at what he says. He said that the word of the Lord came to me saying, that's verse 5, O house of Mount Zion. Amen. Cannot I do with you at this part of Says the Lord. So I want to give some encouragement to those of us who are in here today. I want to encourage you to let you know that the potter wants to put you back together again. Amen. And and where he wants to work is on the inside. He said that the clay is in the potter's hand. So are you in my hand. And I want to shout that the best place you can be right now is in the hand of God. Amen. Because the scripture says that if you're in God's hand, no man can pluck you out in God's hand. You know how important it is to be in God's hand? Jesus, while hanging on the cross. Jesus, while dying for your sins and mine. Let me tell you what Jesus said. Father, into thy hand I commend my spirit. Even Jesus know that you need to be in the hand of the Lord. Now, let me tell you something about being in God's hand. The Bible says you don't want to be in the hand of an angry God. How can you make God angry? By not doing what he said. So we need to learn that if we're in God's hand, he's molding us and making us. Every now and then he needs to break something off. Because he realized you don't need that. Yeah. Right. Every now and then he needs to add something to it. Yeah. Because he see a little short on something. Yeah. But I want to let you know that right now, even while we're sitting in this sanctuary, uh -huh. God is molding yeah. 
us into what he wants us to be. Yeah. Amen. Now notice, he don't, he not molding you into what you want to be. But he molding you into what he wants you to be. Oh, I'm glad to be in the hand of the Lord. Amen. Because, see, he's a shelter in a time of storm. Bridge over troubled water. Bread when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty. I'm glad to be in the hand of the Lord. Every child, when they're just beginning to walk, and parents always grab them by the hand because they don't want them to get away from them. And so, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. Because if thou withdraw thyself from me, oh, whether shall I go? Lord, hold my hand while I run this race. Amen. I'm glad to be in the hand of the Lord. Amen. Because he in God's hand. I know that he's going to fix me. Why I need fixing. I don't know about you. I got some tore up stuff going on in my life. Amen. I got some broke down stuff in my life. I'm carrying around some stuff I need to let go in my life. But to God I say, as long as I'm in his hand, every now and then I can feel him squeezing on one side, pulling on the other side. Every now and then I can see where he's making me better and better. So Jeremiah had to go to the potter's house. You just need to go in prayer. Have a little talk with him. Say, Lord, I'm so glad I'm in your hand. And I want to share with you because I'm through now. Yeah, I'm through. Amen. Ain't much more to say. You agree with what I said so far? But what I need to share with you is how do I get in his hand? Amen. How, how, how can I wind up in God's hand? Amen. Well, ain't but one way to get there. And his name is Jesus. And I told you, Jesus already gave us an example. He said he wanted to be in God's hand. And so he made a way that I could get in God's hand. And you know what that way was, don't you? He was called Calvary. On an old rugged cross. I told you it's the emblem of suffering and shame. But my God wanted me to be in his hand so much that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but be in his hand. He died that Friday. But oh, thank God for Sunday morning. Yeah, see, Sunday morning, we have a good time on Sunday morning. <laughs> because Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And I'm so glad. I'm so glad he died for me. I'm so glad he was buried for me. But I'm so glad he got up for me. And right now, I may not look like it. May not act like it all the time, but I'm always in God's hand. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, whose hand are you in? as we stand all around this church. The only one that can answer that question is the one that knows the answer. If you're here today and, and you don't know Lord Jesus and a part of your sins, my sister, my brother, this is the invitation that's been extended. 
If you're here today and you were here last Sunday and you hadn't made that decision, and you're right back here today, why don't you make that decision? Why don't you come unto the Lord? If you're here, just accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Today will be a good day. Will you come? The invitation has been extended. The door of the church is open. His name is Jesus. He's waiting for you to come.
God bless you. Keep you real good. As we make our way to the altar this morning. Won't you just bundle it up in the middle of your hands and give it to Jesus. And give it to Jesus. He will fix it all. I know he will. Y'all were having baptism immediately after service. If your heart is broken, if your heart is broken, Jesus can fix it. If your home is broken, God can fix it. And even if you ain't got nothing but joy in your home, Jesus can make it full and complete. Just get down on your knees and say, fix it, Jesus. <laughs> Fix it, Jesus, just like you said you would. It didn't catch him by surprise. He already knows. Was broken, he already know. Well, y'all just said, Do it, Jesus. Do it for me. Do it for me. Do it for me. Somebody don't even know how to ask the Lord to do it for me. Lord, I've got some friends. I've got some family, too. Lord, I just want to say thank you. Last few days, been talking with a man on schizophrenia. Talking about throwing in the towel and, and giving up. Tried my patience. But, Lord, you came shining through. I've been in these situations before where it looks like every single thing that could go wrong did go wrong. And then, Lord, it was just right for you to fix. Around this altar today, Lord, I can't count the problems. Lord, even out here in this waiting audience, so much hurt and then so much pain. Lord, this Cooper family, <laughs> brother and sister, go be with you in less than 24 hours apart. Bury them together on the same day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. They're not the only ones. Master, have us to know this morning it's not you picking on us. It's the devil that picked us out because he know we belong to you. Keep on keeping us, Lord. Master, please hold us like you've been holding us in the hollows of your hand. And in the 
deep protection of your care. We need your help. Master, bless these babies now. Newborns and especially our teenage children. Lord, have mercy right now. Bind us now back the way parents and children used to be bound. Master, help us to wake up today to find out that you are in control. And knowing that you are in control, take control. Because there's a lot of brokenness, Master. Master, I'm not even worried about this broken country anymore. I'm more concerned about the house where I live. So if you would just help us and keep us, we're going to be mindful to give you the glory, give you the honor, and give you the praise. Somebody say, thank you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. A couple of more things. Book sign the hospitality house tomorrow, six o'clock, Rum Car. Go out there, get your dishes. And uh and uh God bless you, keep you real good. And we're getting ready for baptism. Now we're getting ready now to go to the baptizing pool. Baptism. Excuse me, church. Excuse me, church. We're having a baptism in the back, so if you could hold it down just a little bit, it'd be wonderful. Amen. Amen. Brother Bonds is going to read the scripture and pray, and then Brother Wilfred is going to administer the baptism. Amen. We're going to... If you're excellent, go ahead expeditiously, please. Those of you that are stand, we're getting ready to read the scripture, and we are still in obedience. We're still in service. So we still give God the most high obedience that we can. Amen. Baptism, service. Amen. If you're leaving, go ahead. If you stand, go ahead and get a seat. Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. The word of God reads like this. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be in Christ, dead in Christ with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, Death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye yourselves also to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bow for a moment of prayer. Father, we thank you again for this awesome day that you've given to us. 
We thank you again for allowing us to come back and to celebrate and to worship you. Then, God, we thank you for these souls that have come unto the family of Christ. We ask now that you would have your way, Lord, that you would be totally happy that these souls have come to you. And thank you for allowing us to celebrate with you. We ask this in your darling son, Jesus' name. We do now pray. And all that love the Lord the most said, amen and amen. Heaven rejoices now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.